So if this is a Bryce tutorial, you are perhaps wondering, not unreasonably, what we are doing in this alien software. This is Substance Painter, and it's very good. I like it. I use it a lot. And it is part of a workflow that allows you to texture your objects so that they are ready for physically based rendering. Hmm. This all sounds a bit jargonistic. So, before we go too far, I will encourage you to go and look at Algorithmic, I think I've pronounced that right, uh, tutorials for physically based rendering workflows. Uh, they're very good tutorials that uh, Algorithmic put out. These are the company that makes Substance Painter, and I've watched quite a lot of their tutorials, so I recommend them. And the, the key thing that is, is good to understand if you don't know this, which is why I'm saying you should watch this, is the difference between base colour and diffuse. Because we're going to come to that. What role roughness plays in describing the surface of a material, how the metallic channel works, and, and a few of these other things. That, I mean, many people will be aware of this, so uh, that's why I'm not trying to include it all in my video but these were considerations for when it came to trying to work out which particular maps to export to then use in Bryce to try and simulate um, a physically based rendering environment within Bryce bearing in mind Bryce was made a long time ago its render engines are quite long in the tooth and they don't really quite match up to this sort of workflow but it can sort of be done which is Kind of brilliant really so anyway to get back to the point we'll go back into substance painter now okay so i've made this simple model and i've textured it in substance painter now i've got the these maps on the left hand side those are the maps that you paint into these maps here are the maps it generates that it can use on textures and you can also export these maps and then it can also derive maps from these maps and these maps and create them for export which is how we get our maps out to send into Bryce. What I've got here is uh, a metal that's a copper metal and it's quite rough on the surface. So if I, if I, oops, not paint on that, if I, if I can remember which key to hold down. If I move this around, you can see it's interactive with the background. You can see this is quite a, um, a rough surface, but it's not rough as in like these bumpy areas. These bumpy areas are rough in a different way. This is a very smooth surface and you can see that it's also still got bumps in it so there's there's roughness and there's bumpiness They're two different things so that's something to be aware of and also reflection wise when when we've got a copper material the reflections become copper tinted but this is just yellow paint and if you can see the reflections on this they're not color tinted at all so it's got its base color but it's reflecting as if, it, if it's got like a thin white reflective mirror-like layer over the top it's not tinting so metals tint the colors when they reflect but glossy surfaces don't and rough surfaces are actually blurring the reflection that's the, that's the key point it's not just that they're very bumpy so you can have a blurred bumpy reflection or a sharp bumpy reflection so there's a lot of things going on here and i've included an emissions channel because you know if you are creating a model well, I don't know, let's say a spaceship you might have the windows lit up or running lights and things like that so that would be a kind of thing you would want to be able to export so let's look at the little export selection that I've made so we've got export textures and we'll look at the configuration that's what it's called and I've made one for Bryce so here it is so what am I exporting in an art from the RGB channel of the emissive I'm sending that out I'm getting the gray channel from the height uh, which is what we're going to use for bump unfortunately Bryce doesn't use uh, normal maps it would be nice if it could do that but uh, we don't have that a shame uh, and I'm going to export this glossy that's generated for the unity 4 engine now the reflection was too reflective and these glosses were also too reflective so this is the least glossy of glosses and it's this value that i'm going to use to drive reflection but even at this it's still too reflective to use in bryce so that's why i put this little note on the back end of here to remind me that i need to gamma 
modify that and to uh, by 0.4 to to really take the the values towards the darker end of the spectrum you never spectrum with a grayscale well sort of so the next one I'm exporting is the roughness channel now roughness is very important for creating um, the, the very fine detail on the surface of an object so it's going to be finer than bump and it's expressed in terms of how much we blur the uh, reflection on that so you'll see how that's done in Bryce it doesn't have a roughness channel but you can generate it with uh, with a little bit of knowledge and we're going to get metallic out that's very important when we we talk about uh, if I find it again the the diffuse in Bryce isn't a diffuse channel it's actually a base color channel uh, which means that we can use the metallic to send the areas that are metal the the, the base color which then becomes the the color that modifies the reflection color in the uh, in the render when we get a reflection on it so if you if this was if this was metal and red then you'd have if you imagine looking at a bauble on a Christmas tree you know, they're metallic surfaces then the reflections and those the colors tint whatever you see so everything would be tinted red in that case but that's not that's the uh, what they call it a dielectric area the painted area so that acts more like a diffuse channel because of the selection with this metallic channel. I don't really need to go into that too much because uh, you can always find out about that yourself. I'm just trying to give you some kind of overview of you know why I've made the choices I've made because this may not be the best way of doing it so you know this is uh, open to revision and I'm going to export a base color so the base color that's one of its base maps here so I'm exporting six maps and we'll just do that now and then I'll go to the folder wherever it is and we'll have a quick look at those maps so those are the maps now they're exported and uh, you can see what we've got here is base color now this pink area here this is our copper this is the UV map I, I did make them enough UV can't do with anything in the substance without having some UV maps to work on even though you don't necessarily have to work directly on the UVs so this is the where the copper area is and this gray area is where the very very shiny metal is down here and this is just our emissive output for these letters that are scrolled on our height map our metallic and these two that I'm going to have to modify which I shall do in PaintShop Pro in fact I've done this a few times already because you no know, tutorial goes through straight through in one go so we'll do it again and again so here we go the roughness map I've done that wrong I need to go back I need to increase that what was I saying about tutorials going wrong okay well you might just as well make this mistake what I'll do is I'll bring in the unity 4 glossy one and adjust that uh, with the the gamma to point four file save and then I shall adjust this one gamma and increase that to four now I just played around with these values till things sort of looked right they've not been uh, arrived at scientifically so take all that with a pinch of salt so that gives me uh, rougher areas are now even rougher but this would be in substance but this is going to be interpreted by Bryce and the reflective areas are less reflective so in Bryce I'm going to load in import object my test object and I usually do it with material but there's only one material group in this anyway so never mind and I'll just enlarge that a bit so you can see it and lift my camera up rotate it slightly turn my camera around quick render so you can see we've got what we had in substance and now we're going to load in some materials some textures into the material so go into the material put a blob in diffuse get the picture go into the editor click an empty square select my base color and into this second channel I'm going to choose a uh, bump for example so that gives me diffuse I don't need ambient turn up bump drop in that so that gives us our bump information the next one we're going to go for is I'll do the specular halo so specular halo picture texture empty square and that's going to be our roughness check out of that and I'm going to load in reflection for this so where's our that's going to be our glossiness there we go so these two are going to work together 
give us our reflection there. Right, so the thing about specular halo is under the the, the re regular render engine in Bryce, it does one thing, but under the the premium effect render engine, it actually modifies a blurriness of the surface uh, reflections provided you engage that in the premium render. That's why we're not going to use any specularity here because that would that we'd be crossing different channels together. Now uh, we are going to uh, load in the ambient now. So picture and uh, empty blob. There's our ambient. And in this one, I'm going to load in the metallic. So that's there. And check out of there. So we drop the ambient, is an ambient, metallic in metallic. And this is going to do our switching between the way it treats the colors when it comes to reflection. So where we've got our non-metal areas, where this yellow and green painted areas are. Well, it's, it's green's a sort of um, sort of a corrosion on a metal surface, I think, but, but never mind. Anyway, that acts again as a dielectric. Uh, you have uh, the reflection just being like a, a mirror-like reflection without any, any uh, tinting coming from the diffuse channel, whereas where it's metal, then these colours come into play. So that goes into metallic, ambient goes in there, you need to drive the ambient with some ambient colour, check out of there, go to the sky and fog, give it full ambient output, give that a quick render. So. We're not there yet, as you can see, and that's because I've not engaged premium effects. This is just as things are in the default render. So what we should hope to see, and I'll, I'll change the angle of this slightly because I, I need the horizon to be across this reflection so you can see that it becomes blurred. So you can see at the moment this reflection is not blurred at all. These bump areas are working. That's okay. It will be better with normals, trust me. But we haven't got that. And this is, uh, I can't think of the name for the, the right word for corrosion. Is it verdigris? I don't know if that's a copper material. What you get on bronze, it might be. Oxidization, let's call it. So that's a non-metal. This is a non-metal, so this this uh, yellow paint shouldn't be tinting this re reflection here. And this is our most reflective material, so I'm hoping that stays looking really reflective and sharp. Into the render options, I go premium effects. Uh, we'll leave it at 64. That's going to be a bit slow, but we'll do that. And I'm going to use blurry reflections to work with the specular halo. And I'm going to improve our lighting. You see, we could have cheated and got the ambient occlusion map out and used that and then done a regular render, but we still wanted to add the blurry reflection. So if we're going to do all this extra sampling and use this effect, we might as well use Trambience. So I turn on Trambience, uh, scatter correction and boost light. And I'll just drop this ray depth down to, uh, to save the rays bouncing around too much because that tends to push the render times up. And then I'm going to change the document setup and I'll make this a little bit smaller so it renders a bit quicker. And uh, I'll narrow the field of view so we, we can cl close in on the object. Right, so we'll give this a render now. And hopefully, after a few passes, you'll be able to see that I think we're sort of getting in the right area with this effect. I'm, um, you know, I'm not going to say it's anything like perfect. It's... A compromise in a lot of ways but uh, it does seem to to give reasonable results and um, so so while that's rendering what I'll do is go into substance and I'll open another file that I've got with something a little bit more interesting to render so it's just gonna load in this file so I think about three gigabytes when it all is so uh, here's a, a model of a cement mixer and it's got its it's got five different texture groups and it's got a mixture of things from plastics, painted metals, uh, metal metals and uh, surface details in the... See this, this kind of surface detail you see with these scratches, this is not bump detail or normal data or anything like that. This is roughness information so you can see that it does, it does give quite a good effect if, once you get the light on it. So anyway, that's by the by. So this is the subject of another render to, to demonstrate, you know, using it in earnest. And unfortunately, Bryce doesn't support subdivision, um, surface subdivision. So this is going to look a little bit, um, well, it won't be a perfect circle in Bryce. This is, isn't subdivided at the moment, but when it goes into its intended output renderer, there are things like octane or 
and uh, and DS also sports uh, subdivision surface. I think Pose, yeah, Poser does as well. Yeah, so all those do so that they, you know, they, because they're working with human figures, they they need need things to be smoothed off. But it also helps when you've got circular things. Like I'm digressing again. I apologise. Right. So uh, we'll just have a quick look. That's how that's going on, and uh, that's how the cement mixer turned out when uh, you know applying this theory. Uh, of of the different ch channels, different effects channels, uh, to to something a little bit more complicated than a few blocks. So, oh, you can see there by the the lack of subdivision. I could overcome that because I could pre-subdivide the model before I imported it into Bryce, or I could load the model into. Um, I wouldn't need to do it in a modeler. I could load the model into Da Studio and use the Da Studio subdivision and then save the export. I mean, but you know, this is just. For the purposes of demonstration, I'm just explaining, really, why why that looks a little bit. But you do see that on mixes when people have cleaned them with bricks. Um, so I think that's more or less it. Once again, I've gone on a little bit too long, but there you go. To recap, the things to export: um, export textures on the configuration for Bryce. I have exported the emissive channel RGB height map grayscale um, the unity for gloss grayscale again but remembering to gamma correct that so that it, I use uh, 0.4 in PaintShop Pro and the roughness uh, from here grayscale but that actually goes into a color channel but that doesn't really matter because we're using it for something other than what it was uh, you know intended when when the specular halo was put there the premium effect render engine was added later and it just interprets that channel so um, that's that needs correcting with gamma again to to make things rougher to get more or less the right effect you need the metallic channel out of uh, out of here so and the base color out of here so essentially we're taking the the input maps all everything except this glossy channel so it's relatively straightforward and then plug them into your your Bryce material as as I demonstrated with this and uh, give it a render under premium effects with blurred reflections that's key to getting this right and since you're using blurred reflections then engage true ambience and scatter correction and boost light and uh, and use that uh, premium option within Bryce to to recreate the effect like this so there you go I hope that uh, has answered your question that marker and thank you for for raising this raising this idea it's a good idea and it was interesting to investigate it so cheers now